Welcome back to HANA Basics for Developers. In our previous video, we created a table, or two tables, and a view using SQL DDL. And at the end of the video, we saw how by using structured privilege check in the view definition, we could apply extra layers of security to our views and do row level security. Now, we left that kind of half finished because as we saw at the end of the video, we simply couldn't access the view. We got a not authorized. So even the technical user could not access the view. So we want to pick up kind of where we left off there and see how we can define the structured privilege itself to be applied to that view that has a structured privilege check on it, and then add that to a role, a database role, that can both be assigned to our technical user so that container access will now be able to use that, that view but also create this database role that could be assigned to other database users to give them access to all the objects inside of our container, but also this view that has a structured privilege check. So we're getting into the scenario here where what if you have database users with reporting level access, they're using a tool like Lumera or business objects or a third party reporting tool, and they want to access this container. They're not coming in as the technical user. They're going to be coming in with their own database user. And what we can do now is we can create roles, but they aren't global anymore. They are specific to a container. They are container specific roles and uh, the container object owner, or a role admin can then grant those roles to regular database users. So we can still get reporting access to, to our container as well. So we're going to kind of kill two birds with one stone here. We're going we're gonna to take our view and make it accessible to the technical, um, the technical user of our container, but at the same, same time be setting up a role that could also be used uh, to grant access to the entire container to regular database users as well. And uh, close out some of the stuff that we had open before and just uh, just to refresh your memory here's the view that we created last time and if I try to view the data I get insufficient privilege even though I'm the technical user uh, even that technical user cannot read from this view by default all right so we're gonna create some new stuff here so let's uh, let's create a separate folder once again this folder structure has no technical impact on the project it is simply for us humans to, to be able to keep things organized um, I'm, but I'm gonna create another folder structure here called roles that's where we're gonna put all our role related stuff once again the name doesn't matter I could have named this XYZ uh, and and it wouldn't matter uh, and I point that out because we're gonna come up to some stuff here in a few minutes that where the where the name does matter. Um, but let's go ahead and create a uh, new database artifact. And uh, what we want to create is a purchase, we'll call it purchase order. And this is going to be a structured privilege. Okay, so when we did that with structured privilege check, we only said that the view needs a structured privilege. We didn't actually create the structured privilege. We just put the requirement for one on there. Now we're actually creating the structured privilege. And this is where we're going to write the rule that's going to uh, basically say, well, what kind of security do we want to apply here? So let me go get the syntax for that. Two, six. And let's put that in. So what we're doing here is we're taking and we're creating a structured privilege named PO view privilege for select on and we give the name of our view. So we're kind of like remotely attaching it to the already existing view. And then we can add the rules here and we're saying where currency code equals Euro. Now I will say, this is a little bit of an unusual situation. Normally, you probably wouldn't hard code the value. Um, normally, you would get the value dynamically from the user profile. Um, and that's something that is certainly possible. I will show you that at the end of the video in a, in a separate example, how we could do things like that. Uh, but it gets a bit more complicated. Uh, and for our beginning learning experience, 
for now, let's just go ahead and hard code a value so we can see how the privilege, structured privilege check works. And then, like I said, at the end of this, I'll show you a, um, a more robust example where we, where we can actually fetch that, that value from the, from the user profile. Okay. Um, now what, uh, that's the structured privilege. Now that assigns a privilege and it's going to do the check on a certain column looking for certain values, but now we need to get that into a role, uh, before it will really be usable by anybody. So they, so they would have that access or to even do that check. So let's create a new database artifact. Let's call this one admin. Uh, we're going to make it, we're going to create a role here that's pretty powerful. Uh, so we'll say admin role. And once again, let me go not type the syntax, but let's pull it up here. And this is the syntax for roles, HDB roles, different than the syntax that we used in the HANA Studio in the old repository. Still, um, still rather JSON based, but but when we converted to HDI and the Web IDE, we did uh, change around the syntax and basically expand the syntax. Uh, but what we want to do here is we're, we're creating a very powerful admin role because what we're going to do is we're going to override the default security of the technical user. Um, we can't just add in the one thing that we want to give them, which is the, the schema analytic privilege. We actually have to say, well, what's the total security going to be? And this does allow us a lot of power. We could really customize the security of that container technical user. Uh, but we have to make sure that it at least still has basic privileges to the entire schema, the entire container. And in doing so, we'll make sure that it has select, metadata, select, insert, execute, delete, update, and create temporary tables. Basically, all the security that it would have had by default, um, but we're adding in here the, the analytic privilege as well that we, we just created in uh, right here. Okay. Now, the other thing that we want to do is we want to create a um, another role and... Uh, this is going to, we're going to use some special naming here, actually. But, uh, let me get this started. We're going to call this one admin owner. Um, and when we create the role itself, this is an interesting thing. Um, the name of the file that I create doesn't actually have to match the name of the object that it creates. So I called the file name admin owner. But the actual role name that it's going to create is admin with a pound sign. Now that pound sign at the end is is really important. Um, it's a special flag that tells the system that when it it gives access to this role, it should use the with grant option. So then this role is then grantable to other users. So we're going to give the um, uh, we haven't really talked about this yet. We'll see this in a second. The, uh, the technical users, there's, there's actually two container technical users. There's one that's the object owner that creates all the database artifacts. And there's a separate technical user that's used at runtime to access the objects. And when we're in the database explorer, we're actually in that, that runtime, that, that application user, uh, technical user. And it's fine to give them the, the basic role, but the technical object owner, we want to then that user to be able to grant roles to other containers, other users, um, you know, other database users. So in order to do that, we need to create a, a separate role with the pound on the end. And, and really, it's just kind of a wrapper role, because we're just going to say include the role admin. So we still only really have one role, but we have a role that we can give to our one user that they can can't in turn grant to anyone else. But then to our main technical uh, container user, uh, owner user, we can give them the ability to also grant that role uh, indirectly to, to other users. Okay, so that's an important piece of the, of the puzzle there. Now, here's the real magic. We want to assign these to our technical users of our container. And they're automatically generated for you when you build. 
So you might say, well, how can I get into that build process and change what happens? Well, there's, a, as I said, kind of a, a little magical trick here in that if we just create a role with a certain name in a certain folder, and, and this is one of the few things where the folder and, and the file name has to be exact. So we have to create uh, something here in the source folder called defaults, and we have to name it, and this is important that you name it exactly this, default access, oh, and I gotta use the lowercase, access role. And this very specific name, in the very specifically named folder, the deployer will look for that, and only if it finds a role with that exact name in that exact folder, it will use that to override the automatic grants to the technical users. So let's go ahead here, and and what we what we add in here, we could we could directly define a role, but it's 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 probably better to just reference an existing role. Uh, so that's what we're going to do here. We're going to create a role named default access role, uh, and we're going to give it the admin role. Okay. Uh, at this point, we could uh, go ahead and build. And we'll give that a second. I want to point out something in the build log to you once it's finished here. Notice that, uh, you know, maybe you haven't been paying attention to all this gobbledygook that's in here. You know, there's this is a pretty big log. But it's important to note here at the end, granting container local default access role to global role access role. So it's basically saying, I found this default access role, and I'm going to use it to override the automatically generated global role. Okay, that's the, the magic, if you will, that's happening here that's going to change our container uh, technical users, that they're automatically going to be overridden now and have uh, this new access. And, and we can test this right away because I can go back over to the database explorer and with the same technical users, the same connection here, now when I go to this view, I can say open data and I don't get the error message anymore. But notice, I'm only seeing the data that has euros in it. It's the same data as there are other view. I'll, I'll pull this up as well so you can see. The, the view, for uh, by default, without the structured privilege check, has 20 records, 10 euros and 10 US dollars. But the one with the structured privilege check is only returning 10 records, uh, only showing us the euros. And you know, this is a really powerful and a really uh, common concept in, in HANA uh, of doing reporting, having role level access. You can imagine here we, we use company code or uh, currency code, but far more common would be to use company code, business area, you know, some business criteria, geography. You know, you can only see data in North America. You can only see data for your particular HR organizational structure. And instead of selecting all the data from the database and, and then throwing away the records the user isn't authorized to see, we push these checks right down in the database. They become part of the where condition uh, of the select against the view. But we didn't have to alter the view. We didn't have to change anything uh, about the view structure. We didn't have to add an input parameter or a where condition to the view. They're applied automatically. They cannot be bypassed. They're part of the security layer. Uh, but but it automatically filters the data down. So not only do we get really robust, solid security, but it actually improves the performance of the reports because this is pushed down to the lowest levels uh, of the earliest selects of the, of the data. Now I did say that I wanted to uh, I wanted to show you a more robust example. And actually, if you come here to the sample solution of of the project. Uh, we have some things that are, are sometimes more complicated than what we want to explain in the uh, exercises themselves. And what we see here, uh, if I look at, uh, uh, if I come into the same database module and I look at the roles, um, what we see here is I've got some more complex um, uh, privileges in here. Uh, for instance, I've got um, a, a, a structured privilege here 
Uh, now that one's hard coded as well. That's that's not a great example, um, but I have a uh, analytic privilege, and we'll we'll see this a little bit later. But what we're doing here is instead of hard coding the value like we did in this example, we're selecting the value from the session context, and we're saying get the XS client assignment from the session context, and this works because the XSA user, the business user we can maintain these criteria in the role of the user and then they automatically get injected into the session context at the database level and and how this works let me just come here to the uh, uh, to the admin tool and I'll show you how the setup works on the security side let me go to the XS advanced cockpit and if I look at no actually if I look at my roles, this particular role that I have assigned to my user, this role collection has a role in it, and it has this this viewer um, role template, and this particular role template has that assignment of, of the client uh, in it, and that automatically gets injected into my user. Now, this is maybe a little bit more than what we want to get into at this point. I just want to make you aware that, that this isn't always hard-coded. A little bit later in, in the exercises and in, in the videos, once we have learned about some of these other things, about roles and role collections at the XSA level, um, I'll, show, I'll come back to this topic and I'll show you how this assignment is done and how the injection is done. Um, but um, it, like I said, that's a little more advanced than what we want to get into, but I don't want to leave you with the impression that that it's always hard-coded. We're only doing that now as part of a learning curve here so that we don't have to know so much in order to, in order to move on. But, but I hope you have an appreciation uh, for how powerful this, this general concept of, of structured privileges and analytic privileges are to be able to do row-level security inside of HANA.